Don't follow this advice if you want to stay broke or if you like waiting around for payday. So the internet is drowning in some unsolicited financial advice, me included, unless you solicit me online via YouTube search. But some of this advice can actually be quite dangerous, harmful to our like financial literacy and also just scaremongery. This video is all about the advice I'm really glad I didn't follow. The first one is something surprising that I've, I wasn't expecting to find on social media so much and it's that you shouldn't take a higher salary because of the higher tax band. And the fact that this is the understanding that a lot of people have adopted just goes to show how complicated and hard to understand the tax system can actually be sometimes. The UK tax system is a progressive system so it works with bandings um, and it doesn't mean your entire banding gets applied to the percentage to the tax rate applicable to a certain banding. So for the 22-23 tax year the common understanding would be oh I'm not going to earn more than £50,270 because otherwise I'll have to start paying 40% in tax rather than 20 and actually it's just the salary that's above that threshold that the 40% tax rate then gets applied to. So if you earn £51,000 it'll be that £730 that gets the higher tax rate applied to it not the entire salary in the same way that you get a personal allowance. So that first £12,570 that you earn is tax free and then anything above that gets the the second tax rate of like 20%. The second one is that debt is bad and not all debt is actually bad. It's consumer debt that is bad and it's actually what you're using the debt for generally that can make it bad. So an example of consumer debt is actually taking out a credit card or getting like a fancy car on finance or using Klarna and like clear pay and stuff like that to pay for like material items that aren't gonna you know increase in value. And good debt would maybe be like using a credit card in a business or taking out a loan to buy property or taking out a loan to invest, which I'm not going to comment too much on because that's kind of a way to leverage your own wealth and make a return on money that isn't yours. But I think that's a topic for a separate video. But my point here is that consumer debt can't really be leveraged to build good credit to earn like, I don't know, credit card points for traveling or to invest in things that are going to grow in value. whereas the good kind of debt can be and that's what differentiates the fact that debt can be good versus debt can be bad but the advice that I do not believe in is the fact that all debt is bad because that just doesn't help anyone knowing how to use debt to actually further your own net worth is the key point to try and learn about the third thing is that buying a property is like the ultimate sign of wealth and is your first step to becoming rich now there are lots of reasons to both invest in property and also not invest in property and they can be very personal reasons like if your financial goal is is to invest in property that you want to live in, that can be your financial goal. The advice that I think is wrong is pushing the fact that investing in property is the only way to build wealth or get rich. I hate the word rich. <laughs> but ultimately my point here is that the goal on your journey to becoming wealthy and growing your net worth shouldn't be I need to buy property. It is to invest your money in something that will grow in value over time. Whether that is property or a business that is up to you to decide but it's not written in stone that it should be property. The fourth thing is you know get rich quick schemes on the internet. I hate them. I hate them with a passion because it kind of makes you believe that there is a way out there there to get rich really quick if you find the right trick or the right business or the right opportunity. Yes, if you find the right opportunity, you found it, but finding that opportunity takes time, it takes learning, it takes, you know, a time investment, which actually isn't something that you can do quickly. And when I talk about get rich quick schemes on the internet that float around, Amazon FBA, drop shipping, e-commerce, specific niches of e-commerce, and forex trading and any kind of trading, you know, basically a source of all bots. These are all higher risk ways to make money, but you should never do anything that's high risk without really researching it and thinking about where your money is going. You can't just dump some cash into some stock and expect to get rich overnight. There is a time investment involved and a significant amount of luck associated to those who are successful with them. The fifth thing is that if you don't earn enough to save, you should be increasing your income, you should be starting a side hustle. And actually I have a lot of thoughts on this because yes, if you're in a position where you're controlling all of your expenses, you're keeping them low, but you still can't you know, earn enough to save money, then yes, you need to start increasing the money that's coming in through side hustles, through being better with your time versus money trade-off. However, the advice that I don't like is that you should go straight to increasing your income without looking at your expenses because the first thing you need to sort out, if you're already kind of thinking about the fact that you want to grow your income and you want to do, be better with money, the first thing you need to look at is your own spending habits and your own budgets and your own expenses. 
And I don't mean, oh, get them as low as possible. I mean, understand them. If you're spending a lot of money, there's almost no point trying to earn more money because you'll just spend it all again anyway. If you're someone who hasn't really looked at your spending habits and you have kind of emotional spending or deeper problems that maybe need a bit of digging. There's just no point in earning more and then whisking it all away anyway. So I think before trying to increase your income, always focus on figuring out your own problems with money, your deep rooted issues and tackle those first. The sixth one is using a balance transfer card to transfer credit card debt to avoid paying it off. And oftentimes balance transfer cards do have hidden fees and they have got catches and there aren't really that many ways to transfer large amounts of debt onto 0% cards because you'll not really be accepted for them if you've got large amounts of debt sitting around. I think more effort needs to be invested into paying down the debt and actually just, again, looking into any issues with money that are not at surface level that you're maybe just kind of ignoring and kind of coasting along because I think the second problem is I don't think people have spending problems or discipline problems. People just have deep rooted issues with money that they haven't kind of touched on or tried to face yet. So I don't truly think you're bad with money, but if you're not the best with money right now, don't keep the situation the same and just transfer debt over. Try and work on it, pay it down, pay it down and double down on your spending habits and emotions with money. Chipping away at this debt will positively impact your net worth in the long term. The seventh thing is that you're too young to worry about your pension. And I have actually been told this before because I've made a little bit of content around ideal pension contributions and the fact that you should be kind of focusing on it at a young age. And I don't mean going ham with it, but you should have it on your radar. And the fact of the matter is you are not too young to worry about your pension. And actually the younger you are, the better because pension are often invested in the stock market and what matters the most for your pension to grow in value significantly until retirement is the time in the market that that investment has. So the younger you start, the longer that pension is going to be sitting invested in the stock market, which means it has the most maximum time to compound and grow infinitely in value until you retire. So actually you're probably not too, you could be younger to worry about your pension. You could be younger. The eighth thing is that if you're new to budgeting is that you have to track every expense in order to budget properly. Now, the reason I don't believe in this is because it's a lot of pressure on people who are new to budgeting, new to financial literacy, to try and then control every single one of their expenses. Trying to like budget last month's transactions and categorizing every single one, it can get super overwhelming, especially if you're coming from a place of not being great with money anyway and being an overspender. It can lead to feeling micromanaged every time you spend with very little flexibility. And secondly, like trying to manage an overly detailed budget is super time consuming and you're not going to stick to that. It's not a very sustainable way to budget unless you are a very like in the details obsessive person, which I am, but I still find very detail level budgeting too overwhelming. And when you're first getting into budgeting and personal finance, you want to be able to maintain a habit over time. So starting with lots of detail is not the way forward. I think you should start extremely broad, like maybe have literally maximum three to five categories of spending, including income and across, you know, the fixed and variable categories. And that will allow you to be more consistent. This will not only make it easier for you to keep track of and organize your expenses, but it'll also give you some freedom to actually just like live in the moment and have some flexibility flexibility with you know the broader boundaries of your budget and the 10th final and very wholesome piece of advice that I'm glad I didn't follow is not getting any advice at all and not seeking it out this is very common you know and I think as part of a generation now that we are much more open about our finances I ask friends about money we talk about money not only because I talk about money online but also because I'm very vocal about things that make me anxious and things that make me happy and my financial goals as well and I'm glad that I didn't kind of follow suit in staying silent about financial habits and anxieties. I think that's the way we should keep it going from now on. I think there's a lot to say about not shaming people for not knowing the right things. And I don't want this video to come across as that because that's the reason that the world of personal finance can seem really scary. And a lot of the advice that I'd seen in this video, I'd seen circulating on social media a lot. And there are a lot of the reasons that I took as long as I did to start actually investigating my issues with money and also personal finance as a whole. And the fact is not everyone has grown into an environment where talking about money is easy. And on top of that, people don't have time to learn. People don't have time to figure out if the advice that they received was even bad in the first place. And quite simply, the educational system didn't equip us as well as we would have liked, but I think that onus is now on us to kind of just have more open conversations about money and talk about mistakes that we've made and maybe advice that we've heard and acted upon that didn't work out too well. So I hope you're enjoying this one guys and I'll see you in the next one.